Hi there. My name's Paul, aka Avon in BBS circles, and also known as the Mystic Guy. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. In this series, we're going to be taking a look at how to install Mystic Bulletin Board using a Raspberry Pi. And we're currently remoted into a Raspberry Pi Model B. This is a headless version that I'm using VNC to view the screen on. And I know there's been a lot of interest in using Raspberry Pi and Mystic, so I figured I'd do a series of how to get set up using Mystic, but particularly for a Raspberry Pi system. So this particular episode is just about how to download and install Mystic Bulletin Board System on your Raspberry Pi. And we're also going to just create the system operator account, the SISOP or SISOP account, however you choose to pronounce it. I say SISOP, so forgive me if you think I'm wrong. And we'll just be creating that as part of our initial setup in this particular clip. So I've fired up a copy of the web browser software that ships with the Pi called Chromium, and we want to head to www.mysticbbs.com in order to grab our copy of the software. When you land at the page, just a couple of things to take note of. Um, the Downloads tab, obviously a great place to grab the software. We'll go there in a second, but also just pointing out the wiki, which is a work in progress, but that's a great resource. Uh, hopefully like these videos um, to find information that will help you with your Mystic setup. Firstly though, let's go to the Downloads page and there, depending on whenever you arrive, however long it is into the future before you watch this video, you'll find a copy of a recent version of Mystic BBS that you can download. There are versions for Windows, Linux, Macintosh OS X and of course Raspberry Pi, so let's grab that one. We're downloading the zip file and we will take a look at where that is and it's turned up in the Pi Downloads folder. If I double click on that it will show me there are files inside and I'm going to go and extract all of these to a temp folder that I'll just create inside my Downloads folder. I double click on that you'll see there are a number of files inside. I'll just point out that unix.install.txt is a useful file to read. It's got a lot of information about just getting started, how to set up your terminal, uh, some basic information about installing, even some guidance about um, how to maybe install a, a bulletin board door if you want to using DOS emulation. For now though I'm going to can out of those and fire up a command prompt and let's just change to the directory where we have all the install files. And there they are there. Now for the exercise today I'm going to install the software in um, a root directory. So I'm going to do so by elevating my privileges using sudo dot forward slash install and it's asking me just to check whether I see a block character correctly. It's trying to evaluate what kind of code page I'm running, what sort of emulation, so uh, this will be UTF-8 no doubt. So I'm going to say number one, and that just means when it displays the installer screen it's showing nicely on my terminal. There are options here to read what's new, upgrading from another version, um, some details there, but for now we're just going to install Mystic and we're going with that standard uh, directory install, so just straight off the root directory forward slash mystic. Press F2 to install and copy the files, press any key to finish that, and it's saying to us here don't forget to log in and create your SISOP account and also then run the configuration side of things to set stuff up. So that's all good and well. First thing we need to do though, because we're logged in as the Raspberry Pi user, if I just um, display the directories here, you'll see that all of these files are owned by the user Pi and in the file group Pi. If I fire up another terminal and we just get to the root directory and I look at those files and, and folders, everything is owned by root, including at the moment what we've just installed, the mystic directory. So we want to change that and just set the ownership back to the Pi user because that's the user we're going to be most of the time when we're logged in. 
How do we do that? We go sudo, which elevates our privileges to a root user. Chown, C H O W N, space dash uppercase R, space pi, colon pi, space forward slash mystic. So this is saying change the ownership, uh, do a recursive change through all the files, and set things to pi as the owner of uh, everything in the mystic directory. Now if I just take a look at those directories again you'll see that this time round everything is owned by pi and that's good. So let's close that terminal, we no longer need that and let's use this terminal to start with and I will just change directory to the mystic folder, clear that and to run the uh, local login you can go dot forward slash mystic and if you just press enter that will work as well or you can put a switch in it which is dash l for local login either way you're going to be presented with a screen that looks like this now my handle is avon and uh, just fyi that's nothing to do with the old avon calling cosmetics it's all to do with a, a uk tv series called black seven and there was a, a character there called Kur Avon. Google it and find out more if you're interested, but that's why I'm calling myself Avon. Now, it doesn't know that I am Avon on the system, so it's asking me if I want to create a new account, and I'll say yes. So my handle is Avon. My real name is Paul Hayton. I'm a male. My email address is avon at bbs.nz. That's a real address. If you need to get hold of me, feel free. Uh, how did you hear of this? Well, I watched it on the video, but oops, can't spell S Y S. A SISOP told me about it. My password, somewhere between 4 and 15 characters long. For this, I'm just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 because this is a demo system and we, we need something simple that you and I can remember. And then I'm just pressing Enter to create the uh, account. And I'm pressing Enter a few more times. No to that, no to this because I'm just trying to get through to the main menu. So here we are, we've logged in, and we're not going to linger on this at all. We're just going to get out really fast because we need to carry on with our configuration. So forward slash G and jumps us back to the prompt. And this time, instead of dot forward slash mystic dash L, I'm going dash CFG to run the configuration side of things. And for this video, I just want to zip over to the editors and go into user editor. You'll see that there is one user created, which is me, Avon. Uh, my security level is level 10, and what we want to do is elevate our security to the highest level that gives us access to all the features as an administrator. Pressing enter on this brings us up to the details for that particular user, and just as a footnote, you can press the page up and page down keys to step through all the various pages that uh, of information that you can look at for the user and set. But on the very first page you'll see over here on the right it says uh, Control-U for upgrade and if I go Control-U you'll see that it's now showing me three predefined security levels of which the highest is the system operator that we want to set this account to. Um, footnote 2, you can set between 1 and 255 different security levels if you really want to go crazy. In order to see all those, the forward slash key brings up a command list and there is one option on this menu to toggle uh, the hidden undefined security levels on and off. So if I press H, you'll now see that I've got all of these security levels all the way up to 255 that I could get in and, and uh, set up. But for now, let me just toggle that back to this and I press enter on system operator and then if I press escape to save those changes you'll now see that my security level is 255. Um, if you want to find where that is in this screen just press enter again page down once and the security is set there 255. Now if I escape out a couple of times and just get back to the command prompt and we run the login process again You'll see this time when I key in my name, Avon, and I can put my password in, 1234. It's saying, do I want to log in invisibly because it realizes I've got system operator access so I can hide this login. I'll say yes for the heck of it. If I go no, no, 
no, I'm just jumping to the main menu quickly again. You'll see I've also got an option down here in the bottom right called SISOP menu. Uh, forward slash asterisk gives me a SISOP menu with a whole bunch of other functions that I can now access. So I'm going to quit out of that and goodbye fast back to this command prompt and there we will leave this particular episode. So in the following episodes we'll be starting to configure message networks and how to access and set up files and so forth. Um, but I'm just recreating uh, this series of videos that was originally done about two, three years ago now and just trying to update things, particularly too with a focus in this series on the Raspberry Pi. So until next time, thank you for watching and if you uh, like the video, please uh, feel free to subscribe to this channel uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this. Bye for now.